Hey everyone, I'm Melissa from Ma's Hook Nook, and this is Crochet 101 Beginner Crochet. In this video, we're going to talk about different crochet hooks, different crochet tools, different kinds of yarn, and then we will get into the stitches, which we will be working on the slip stitch, chain stitch, and the single crochet. So let's get started. So let's talk about the different kinds of crochet hooks. I have two different sets. Like this is one that holds just a bunch of random different ones. And this isn't even everything that goes in my little box. And this is just a really old school box. And this is one of my favorite sets. And this is a boy, B-O-Y-E, ergonomic set. This is my hook that I'm currently using. This is one of the most common crochet hooks. It's the H five millimeter. And I love these because they have the handle, the ergonomic handle. And I do have the full set. These were bought in another set. The only one I'm missing here is the letter M. And I have not been able to find that one. And this is a gauge. We'll get to that in just a little bit. But this is one kind of the hooks or the ergonomics. And now I'll get back into this box. Then you get into, like this one's the so this is another kind of ergonomic hook. This one's a J hook. It has been wrapped in polymer clay to give you the cushion that you need for your fingers. Then you, of course, your regular aluminum crochet hooks that are available at pretty much all craft stores. Here's a different kind of ergonomic hook. It's the one with the bamboo handle. And this one is a Susan Bates. My camera does not want to focus, but it does. It says Susan Bates. And there is a difference in the boy and the Susan Bates. The boy, as you can see, it's a rounded hook that the hook is just rounded but with the Susan Bates they have the inline head and you can see it cuts deeper into the hook and it gives you a point here it holds your yarn a little better I have not been able to find a ergonomic set with Susan Bates they probably make one and I just haven't found it of course here you have your bamboo hook what's good about these they're nice and smooth and when they get rough and start snagging your yarn you just take a piece of sandpaper and sand it down and then they smooth out then you have the crochet hooks I do not suggest the plastic they're very you can bend them really really easy and Depending on how tight you crochet, they break very easily. I just have this one just to show people some of the hooks that you really don't need. And I've collected hooks over the years. This is what they call the steel hooks. These are the little bitty hooks. It's trying to focus on that little bitty see how little tiny this is not even the smallest one I have I have some that are even smaller hooks than this like this one it's a size 2 I have my great grandmother's steel hooks that she has in a case I think there was one other crochet hook in here then you have Crochet hooks that are just for fun. 
like this one. It is a plastic hook. I know it is a size E, 3.25 millimeters, because that's what the book said, but this is, it's Harry Potter's wand. It's just a novelty hook. Yeah, there's all kinds of hooks to be had, and... But this, the main sizes you'll need is an H and an I. I'm trying to find my I hook. Here we go. There's an I, which is 5.25. They suggest these two hooks for beginner crochet because a lot of patterns require H, I, and a J hook. And there's one, there's a J hook. It's a six millimeter. And there's all kinds of hooks out there and you just got to get what you're comfortable with. I like the ergonomic because I do crochet so much they're nice to hold and something else to talk about is how to hold your crochet hook the only wrong way to hold a crochet hook is if it hurts you when you're crocheting if you're doing stitches and it hurts you need to find a different way because there's the way you hold it is a pencil and then there's the knife hold. And there's, I will have a photo put in of all the different kind of holds. I just know this is what's comfortable for me is holding it like a pencil. And I, whoops, camera going flying. I am right handed. So, I've never been, tried crocheting with my left hand, but I am teaching both my daughters to crochet, and they are both left-handed. And what they do is they, they hold it in their left hand, and they sit across from me, directly in front of me, and they just copy everything I do, and they said that's really easy. But that's about it for the crochet hooks right now. Let's move on to some of the crochet tools. crochet tools now one of them these are kind of classified as well they are crochet hooks but they look like knitting needles they have one in and then they're really long and then a hook these are actually for Tunzian crochet which is kind of similar to knitting but they're just really long and they come into different sizes and different lengths also so they're kind of a hook and a tool one of the most important ones will be your stitch gauge this one is a Susan Bates it has the ruler on top this is your actual stitch gauge right here and these are actually different sizes of the crochet hooks and then you also have this kind of stitch gauge and normally when you measure gauge you just go to four inches and that's why I have my little four inches marked off I actually found this gauge in the sewing section instead of with the crochet and knitting stuff so if you're looking for a gauge and you can't find it try the sewing area and we'll get into how to use them a little later of course scissors are very important and make sure you have a pair of scissors just to cut your yarn. I actually have probably over 10 pairs of scissors, but some of them have been used to cut other things because somebody will just grab a random pair and cut stuff that they don't need to. 
I promise not everything I have is actually pink. <laughs> Your yarn needles. I do like to use the metal needles because the plastic ones do tend to break. And again, the needles come in different sizes also. A ruler. Measuring tape, ruler. You find yourself measuring a lot. Slide this guy out of the way. These two different kinds of stitch counters. This one is one that you slide onto your hook and every time you make a stitch you just count your stitches as you go along. My camera does not want to stay where I put it. Then I have this stitch counter, electric, you just push the button and it counts and then they have a reset button so you can easily reset it. This one you can wrap around your finger, you can put it on your thumb, it's got different sizes. I got this set in a three pack from wish.com, I actually found them for free and I paid a dollar for shipping. So yeah, it took it three weeks to get here but one of these in your craft store normally costs six to ten dollars so I thought a dollar was a good price bobbins crochet bobbins so that you can wrap your yarn around it when you're working on a project with more than one color some people don't like having the whole uh, skein of yarn connected to their project so they just take a good length of yarn and wrap them around the bobbins so they have yarn. This is one kind of stitch marker. Stitch markers are really helpful especially when you're doing a crochet project in the round making a hat. Really important with stuffed animals and my little box doesn't want to open. There it goes. <laughs> but this they're, these are kind of like spring rings, O-rings. you got to split these open and then weave it through. I also like to use a paper clip, a safety pin, or even an earring. They're easy to grab. Then I have something else when you're going to make stuffed animals. The safety eyes. And they do come in different colors, different sizes, everything. This is just the size that I had for my wolf I made recently. And you just slide that back on it and it snaps in place. Really nice to have instead of having to crochet an eyeball. And something else, I just recently found this. This is called an Edget. There's a lot of people that like to crochet around the edge of fleece blankets. And this is the tool that you would use to poke the holes around. Not wanting to focus on it, but there is actually a little hook on here, but I don't want to really touch it because it, it is sharp. This is made for poking holes. I wish I had had this when I made my crochet slippers with the flip-flop bottoms. This would have made it a lot easier because I used a felting tool. And the felting tool is not the size of yarn, so... This is my felting tool. I don't know how I ended up with it, but... It's a little felting tool and it's just a little needle that you poke holes with and it's it's just a needle and this is a lot thicker. This would make the yarn easier to pull through the hole because with this I had to poke the hole then take a crochet hook and go through the bottom of the flip flop again because this didn't make a big enough hole. So the next thing to talk about is our yarn course with crochet you also need yarn 
this is what I'm going to be using to teach the basic stitches. And this is just Red Heart Super Saver that you can get in most of your craft stores or any craft department. It is a weight four. And that means it's a medium worsted weight yarn. It's just really easy to work with. Some of them feel a little scratchy at first, but after you wash them, they do soften up. But there's different kinds of yarns. Like this one I have. This one's a Lion brand. My labels are coming off. But on all yarn labels, it will tell you the weight of the yarn. Like this one is a 6, which is a super bulky yarn. It's pretty thick. It will tell you the suggested knitting needle size and the crochet hook size. Now, not all crochet hooks are created equal. I will show you that. Let me get my... Because if you'll notice, this is, you need an end hook, which is also a size 13, and it is 9 millimeters. Well, this is my end hook, and if you look, mine is a 10 millimeter. So, it just depends on the company as to what size. Like the boy, it's a 10 millimeter. I'd still be able to use my end with this yarn, even though it's just a millimeter bigger. And that, that's a pretty big hook. I haven't got to use this hook yet, but one day. Then you get into some of your specialty yarns. Like this. It's wrapping around my camera. It's so thin. This is called Fun Fur. It's a specialty yarn. This looks like little eyelashes on a string. It's really hard to work with. And here's some that's from Lion Brand. That's Heartland. And see, like this one, it says this is a medium weight, which is four. And that's what it'll say on the Red Heart Super Saver. And then, it, of course, your needles and your hook sizes. And it's a pretty thin yarn, too. And another specialty yarn. This is also by Lion Brand. It's tangled in a crochet hook. But something with this yarn here. You'll notice it's kind of wavy. It's thick in some places. And then go down the same skein. of See how thin it gets. And then it will eventually go back. But this does have a pretty color change. See, on the variegated yarns, and that's what the, the super colorful ones are called variegated yarns. They put these on there to show you kind of the color gradient. And this one is called the landscape yarn. Yes, it's, it's a harder yarn to work with. And this one is your sock yarn. This is what you make sock with. It's very thin and it's very soft. You do not want to go out and buy Red Heart Super Saver and make a pair of socks. Because you'll end up with the biggest sock you have ever seen. And you need to read the content on some of your yarn. Like this one. This is alpaca yarn. Made in the United States. And yes, you can get into high prices in yarn. And this yarn is actually not dyed. This yarn is the natural alpaca color. And you can see the little fur. So if you're allergic to certain rabbit which is angora or goat angora you might want to read 
your yarn carefully. And like this one, some of them I've been showing you have been balls of yarn. Like this. They consider this one a ball of yarn. But the first one, the Red Heart Super Saver, this is called a skein. This is called a hank. It's kind of knotted on one end and they just twist it up. It's actually super soft. I just, this is the only one I have. And if you look, it'll tell you there's 150 yards and it's 2.6 ounces. Not really a lot. I could make a small hat, like a chemo hat, but you don't make chemo hats with fur. Then you get into these. This one is upside down and backwards, so I can't read it. This is a cotton and polyester blend. And when you go to their yarn info, this is actually rated a lightweight. And it feels really, really good. Uh, I like to make market bags with this yarn. It holds up really, really well. I made some hats. And I made some fingerless gloves with some in purple. It's really soft, really comfortable. Because I know when people hear cotton yarn, they think, oh, just washcloths and bath poops. And that's where we come into this. This is 100% cotton. Cotton yarn is really good for your washcloths, your pot holders, bath poofs, market bags, because cotton yarn doesn't stretch. And also a chemo hat. Cotton breathes. When you make your hats out of acrylic and stuff, they don't breathe really well. And if it's summertime, you don't want to wear an acrylic hat because it's super hot. So I tend to make my chemo hats out of cotton and if you'll notice this cotton is actually rated a medium weight even though I had my little string there it is my middles don't like to come out if you'll notice they're the same size yet this one is rated, rated lightweight and the yellow one is medium weight and I will put a chart in that shows you the different weights of yarn. And they have pictures. Because there's some of the yarns that I don't have. Like, they have super, super bulky. And they have some that's, you know, as big as your arm. And those you do with your hands instead of that. And I just found my other crochet tool that I've been looking for to show you guys. This is one kind of, this is a pom-pom maker. You actually put your yarn in the middle of this and then just wrap this around. Then you take your, well, you cut it first around the ridge. And then you take your yarn and put it in here and it just pops out after you get it tied real tight. And it makes a real nice pom-pom. These are bamboo ones and I like these. I've also got a plastic set. Okay, so here's where you use your Red Heart Super Saver yarn. I do prefer a lighter color. Using a darker color to start off, you want to be able to see your stitches. And you're going to learn very quickly in crochet, black yarn is the devil. It's very hard to work with. And I have an H 5 millimeter crochet hook. And you're going to start off with your slip knot. Let me show you this. The end of your yarn is called your tail end, which is your starting yarn. And then the yarn that comes out of the skein or the ball of yarn is your working yarn. 
So, what you want to do is you want to take your yarn and basically lay it on top of your crochet hook. And then you're going to take your tail yarn and pull it towards you. And you want a good long tail. You never want to have a short tail. You always want a good long tail. And you're going to wrap your tail yarn around your hook, which is called a yarn over. So yarn over. And then you're just going to take this loop here that you have made, this back loop, and you're going to pull it over and create a loop. And then you pull it tight. And that is your slip stitch that creates your first loop. So again, you're going to have your tail away from you and you're working your towards you. Just lay it on top of your crochet hook. Then take your tail yarn behind your working yarn there. Pull it towards you. And you're going to bring it back up front and wrap it around which is yarn over and pull it through then just pull it tight and then you pull tight and that's why it's a slip knot also that way you can adjust it because sometimes you may start with one crochet hook and then decide oh I need to take it out and start with a different one so again your tail away from you the working yarn towards you lay it over the top then bring your working yarn towards you and around the front then yarn over and pull it through and pull it tight and there we go now this is where I tuck my tail yarn is under these two fingers this way when I'm trying to crochet it's it's out of my way and you as you get go along you'll find how to hold your yarn because different people hold it different ways I just kind of I wrap it around my little finger like that and then hold it that way that gives me tension and then you're gonna start with your chain Almost every crochet project starts with a chain and there is actually a chainless foundation st stitch which is a more advanced stitch and we'll, we'll eventually get to that. But right now what you do is you're going to yarn over which is basically you want you, you want to take your working yarn and wrap it around your hook from back to front. So you just want to back to front. And then you're going to grab your tail and you're going to pull it through. And that gives you one chain. So again, you're going to wrap your working yarn back to front, which is called yarn over. And then you're going to pull your tail and pull it through and now you have two and again wrap yarn over and just pull it through yarn over and pull it through yarn over pull it through see the little V's to count them, you just count those little V's. One, two, three, four, and five. And I'm going to go ahead and crochet till I have 15 on my hook. And I do crochet pretty fast. But crochet is not a race, so you don't have to be fast at it. You can be slow. It, 
it doesn't matter. Yeah, the longer you crochet, yes, the faster you will get at it. So now I have 15, and to count them, you just count your little bees. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, and fifteen. And that's a chain and some people like to work in the front of the chain which is your V part that's what this is and some people like to work in the back of your chain and what they do is is they work there's a ridge you can see all the little bumps some patterns require you to work in that little back ridge right there and what that does is on the bottom of your project it makes it look like that there's a loop but for the purpose of this we're going to work through both because you're going to not use this one you're going to skip this one and you're going to go into this one and you're going to go into the center of it and when you go into the center of it you're going to have two loops put together right here you're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop so that you have two loops then you're gonna yarn over and pull through both loops on your hook and that is a single crochet so now you're gonna go into this very next stitch and you're gonna go through the center yarn over pull up a loop so that you have two loops yarn over and pull through both loops and there's another and we're just going to continue on with that just go through the center of each chain and my light just died on me all right Got a new light. This one won't die on me because it's plugged into the wall, not battery operated. But as I was saying, you're just going to continue across your chains. Go in through, yarn over, pull up two loops, yarn over, and you have a single crochet. So let's finish this and show you how to continue to the next row. Because there's a lot of people that get stuck like yes I've learned this stitch but how do I move on it's very hard to crochet while looking through a camera <laughs> you would think it'd be easier because it does magnify everything it makes it a lot larger than it looks in real life And then there's one more to go into the end. And then you're going to turn your work, of course. So now we're going to have our tail end back on our right side. And to continue on, we're going to chain one you're going to skip this first stitch and you're going to go into this second stitch and it has this two loops on top and it has this little hole you're going to go right under there and you're going to have those two lops loops on your hook then you're going to yarn over and just pull up your two loops then yarn over and pull through both and again just go through the little hole that's there yarn over two loops and then I'm going to do this to the end and then show you something different with the chain one there 
but each time with the single crochet. I do want to point out I am using US terms. There are UK terms and UK terms are different than US. A single crochet in UK terms is actually the slip stitch. And I might show you that at the end of the video, the slip stitch, because it is a commonly used, especially for joining rounds. If you're not doing a continuous round, you use a slip stitch. And that's the last one. Then again, you're going to turn your work. Mine's curling up. I'm crocheting really tight. <laughs> and that's how you know you're crocheting really tight is when your work starts to curl. It means your stitches are too tight. You need to loosen your tension. So here I'm going to do a chain one. But I'm not going to skip this stitch. I'm going to go into your first single crochet. And I'm going to show you what it looks like at the end with skipping it and not skipping it. It depends on what your pattern reads. And I will have a video on reading patterns because it is not as difficult as people think it is. The patterns diagrams I'm still learning to read how to do the crochet diagrams which looks like an alien language on paper <laughs> it's a bunch of weird symbols that don't make sense <laughs> a written pattern is actually abbreviated crochet terms and words but the, the diagrams look like an alien language And I'll, I'll, I'll eventually show that. <laughs> Hopefully this will, everything will get back to more normal so that we can actually have classes instead of doing everything on video. Because I know some people will have questions. If you have questions, you can just put them in the comments below because I'm, I'm going to open the comments. I'm not going to turn them off. That be really stupid and I'll have my email available the messenger on my page doesn't always work I just found out somebody sent me a message over a month ago wanting a hat ordered and I never got the notification I'm so mad at Facebook for doing that because that was an order so what we have now, we actually have three rows. One, two, three. I know it's hard to see, but down here is where you're wanting to see. So see this hole? This is where we chained one and we skipped the first stitch. This one right here is where we chained one and we went into that stitch. I know some patterns, and this is just for the single crochet. Double crochet, there's differences into doing that stitch here and skipping it. But in the single crochet, they tell you don't skip that first stitch. When you do your chain one, because you'll get these little holes. And if you're wanting a project that doesn't have holes, that's important. And they always, your pattern will tell you if they're counting the chain as a single crochet or if they're not. And when I do my patterns, I don't like to count that chain because it gives you a nice edging, as you can see. When you do the chain, 
it keeps your project more like this is a square or maybe eh, actually it's more of a rectangle sorry I don't know my shapes anymore but it gives you a nice flat straight edge that way if you wanted to go back and put a border on it you can actually see you could put a stitch here and a stitch here and of course you would do it all through your bottom chain there and then you can see where to put your stitches but those were the slip stitch the chain which is the foundation of all your crochet and the single crochet now that I have time because my video is supposed to be an hour long unfortunately I'm sorry I know a lot of people have the attention span of a squirrel and don't like long videos but in order for me to get my teaching hours I have to have 15 videos that are an hour long so I just sit in my living room and talk to myself. And if you hear any weird noises, I apologize. I have the three stooges outside, which are my three cats. They like to bang on the door because they think they're starving. And there's plenty of food. We have them in an automatic feeder out there and it's full. But they think they're starving. And one of them is staring at me right now through the window. <laughs> he knows I'm talking about him. And any other weird noises would be Gary. But I'm going to show you how to do a slip stitch, which there are some patterns. When you do a slip stitch, it gives you something super stretchy. But it takes a very long time to do when you get a bunch of them together. So I'm going to go ahead... You would go into your first stitch, no matter your chain or single crochet, you just go into your first stitch. I lost my yarn. There it is. Yarn over. You're going to pull up a loop and then you're going to pull that through. And that's a slip stitch. So again, go into your stitch, yarn over, you have two loops and then you're just going to pull it through. And you'll see it, it's not really adding anything to this pattern right now. But yeah, you just insert your hook, yarn over, pull through, and then just pull through that loop. And see what it looks like on top? It kind of looks like it's braided on top. And it's just a slip stitch. But a slip stitch, uh, when put with multiple slip stitches stacked on top of each other it'll make your hat stretch like this to make a really neat hat band because they'll tell you to do like one row of single crochet and then they'll tell you to slip stitch into the back loop which when you stick your hook in you have two loops and of course the one facing you is the front loop and the one behind you is the back loop and they'll just tell you to do a slip stitch into the back loop so you just do your little yarn over pull and pull it see it gives it a nice flat line in the front and then it takes that away and I do know there's some patterns and I have a YouTube video on this because I couldn't find any information. It was telling me to crochet in the third loop. Well, I mean, okay, here's your, your stitch. There's only two loops. What, what third loop are they referring to? You actually flip your work upside down. And they're actually referring to... Like this one is actually in between the bottom part. This is your single crochet stitch. They're actually wanting you to do that. I had no idea, so I had to make a video on it. And I do have a YouTube channel, and on my YouTube channel, everything is broke up into little pieces. 
like talking about the crochet hooks, the yarn. I know I have the single crochet, the double crochet. I don't know if I have the half double crochet. I know I have one that's the treble crochet, which it's a stitch about that long. Or is it the double treble? Oh my goodness, it's been so long. I don't even remember. <laughs> but yeah, this is your basic stitches right now are the single crochet. The next stitches that we will go over will be the half double crochet and the double crochet. And I would like to help you make a granny square and this will be a continuous granny square meaning you can end it anywhere you want you can make it as small as you want or you can make it as big as you want a lot of people like the continuous granny square for blankets and I'll put a photo in the video of a baby blanket that I made it was for my mom's neighbor who lived in Alpharetta she was bringing her daughter home from the hospital and she actually, she was upset because she didn't have a crocheted blanket. She said her family, every baby in the family had come home in a pretty crocheted blanket, but they didn't know anyone who crocheted. So I surprised her with making a, it was a pastel rainbow baby blanket because they hadn't decided on baby colors yet. And they did end up having a little girl, so the pinks and the purples and the yellows worked out really, really fine. And she absolutely loved the blanket. She said it reminded her of the other blankets that they had been brought home in the hospital in. But yeah, you can continue working on and make this... 15 stitches across and just continue going up you can actually make yourself a really nice scarf it may take a while because it is just a single crochet i do have a beginner pattern that we're going to start in the next video and it's using the half double crochet and these uh, the double crochet to make a scarf and with this pattern it's adjustable you can make this scarf for a child or you can make it for an adult because it, it comes in it, it doesn't tell you what length to stop at it just tells you you make it as long as you want it and that's that's a good kind of pattern because you know if you know someone that's six foot six they're gonna need a really long scarf but that is it for this video now I get to work on putting it together and adding in all my photos that I said I would the yarn measuring chart the different crochet hooks how to hold your hooks and again there is no the only wrong way to hold your crochet hook is when it hurts and that that's the best way to explain it and you can crochet right-handed you can crochet left-handed and hopefully i will be able to go out into public places and be able to show people in person how to crochet because i know it may be easier for someone who is left-handed to crochet in person so they can see the stitches better and also hopefully this gets over soon so i will see everyone later and happy hooking <laughs>